Welcome to Coast Vineyard. Welcome to Coast Vineyard. Welcome to Coast Vineyard. Welcome to Church. Well, good morning and welcome to Coast Vineyard Church. My name is Jacinda and I'm one of the pastors here at Coast. And it is my real pleasure to welcome you here with us, whether this is your first time or your gazillionth time. It's just so great that you could join us. Uh, if you are new with us, we want to help you find your way into connection here at Coast. And one of the ways that we can help get that process started with you is if you'd be willing to give us your contact details. You can jump onto the website or fill out a contact form that um, your home gathering host would have and be able to just get your information to us so we can start the process of helping you to connect in and find your feet here at Coast. Another thing that we wanna be able to invite you to do is to um, sign up for our weekly emails. There's such a lot happening right now. We've had lots of change this uh, last week again, and that will have ripple effects out over the weeks to come. We wanna make sure that you're receiving all of our communication. That's through our website, through social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, and also our weekly email, which we send out every Friday. So if you're not receiving that, it's because you haven't given us permission to do so. So jump onto that spot, uh, the connect uh, with us on the website and let us know your details so we can do that. Now today, a few things. Uh, first of all, kids and coasties. Our coasties are our year seven to 10. Very exciting morning for them because they have their own home gathering happening, but that means that there is no online content, content for them today. Uh, for our kids, preschool and primary, you do have some online content on your playlist on YouTube, but also some resources that your home gathering host will be able to give to you or um, that you can access parents, you'll be able to get that on our Sunday services page as well. Uh, we want to also invite you to partner with us and with what God's doing here and through Coast Vineyard by giving financially. Uh, would you please consider, if this is your church home, uh, would you consider uh, giving regularly to the life and the activity that happens in our church, but also through us into our wider community? We know that cultivating generosity as followers of Jesus is a really important part of us uh, in our formation, and that affects uh, our giving financially, not just our time and our energy, but our resources as well. So if you'd like to know more about how you can do that, jump onto the website, onto the giving section, and you'll be able to find multiple ways there to be able to start that. And also, if you want to give specifically to our compassion activity, you'd be able to do that there as well. Now, today, just to let you know what you can expect this morning, we're going to have a short video from Matt, our lead pastor, who's also my husband. Uh, we're also then going to go into uh, just a few announcements to let you know about a couple things coming up. Uh, into a time of worship. Stanley's going to be taking us into our next installment of our Back on Track series. It's been so great this last few weeks. And then we'll finish up with some reflection or conversation questions that are going to sit on the screen at the end that help us just to go a little bit deeper uh, into some of what Stanley will share with us this morning. But before we jump into all of that, why don't we hear from Matt? Well, it's Wednesday afternoon and big announcement today. Vaccination passes are gone on Monday, 5th of April. That's only about two and a half weeks, so that's exciting. And uh, by then as well, the gathering limits will also have increased to 200 people plus workers. So all this is very, very good news for Coast Vineyard churches and churches all over the country. We can all meet together again. Uh, the bad news is that uh, our venue that we meet on Sunday services, uh, Oriwa College, got massively flooded on Monday. There were about three inches of water throughout the whole auditorium. Uh, we went down there, wet carpets. Uh, the water went underneath the doors into our storage area that we've got all of our gear. Um, uh, our equipment is mostly on trolleys and it, they were just this much uh, above the water level which was great so we got away with next to no damage there uh, but all of that stuff is now sitting in garages all over the coast and uh, and the school is evaluating 
the damage and will let us know in a few days just when it will be available for our use but it could be the end of april so timing's terrible <laughs> so we're just trying to figure out what to do um so as we looked at having uh, bigger church services again uh, it's just a great time for all of us to dust off our gifts and talents that we use to make our church so awesome uh, hospitality, setting up, welcoming, children's help, youth help, worship teams, technical teams, so many more other places where we can roll up our sleeves and get stuck in to make Coast Vineyard just wonderful. So um, we are a great church because we all do that and play our part. Uh, and you know, please do let me know if you have any sort of creative ideas for the next month. Uh, you know, let's just all roll our sleeves up and, you know, do our part to get God's people together. Uh, so we're going to keep you posted over the next few days as we figure everything out. But God is with you. God is with us. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing, that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers far and
song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one that could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one that could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Well, hi there and welcome again to Coast Vineyards. Uh, you might be with a home gathering at the moment, if that's the case, awesome to have you with us. In fact, why don't you uh, turn to somebody else in the room and say, hey, so good to be in the room with you. Uh, equally so, if you're here watching on your own or with your family, you're isolating, can't get to one of our home gatherings, it's wonderful, wonderful to have you with us uh, as well. And how good is it uh, to know that we are going to be able to gather together, all together, um, again soon. Hey, if we haven't met, uh, my name's Stanley, uh, one of the pastors here on the team at Coast. Privileged just to share for a couple of minutes around, um, around God's Word. And uh, we're going to continue on uh, this Back on Track series that we're in at the moment, this call to get back on track uh, with the things of God, that good, the things that God is calling us and inviting us into. Uh, last week, Jacinda was answering the question around why church, uh, a really great uh, message that I'd, I'd encourage you to listen or to watch uh, if you haven't done so already. But today I want to actually uh, talk about uh, a pandemic that's worse than COVID-19. But before we go there, hopefully that's got you interested, let's pray. Father, we just invite you into this moment. Holy Spirit, come. Again, as we focus around your word, we pray that you would speak into our hearts. Thank you for your word that gives us life and health. And so we pray, come and guide us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. I wonder if you can remember, I hope that you can, um, Either you had uh, a really big, good secret or someone told you a really, you know, one of those good news, big secrets. Uh, maybe about being pregnant or about a new job or uh, putting a, a, an offer in on your first house, maybe getting engaged, whatever the big news might have been. I, I, I wonder if you can remember how it felt to to either give that, that secret or to receive that secret uh, from somebody else. It's a, it's a unique feeling, isn't it? The, the little passage of scripture that I want to focus in on this morning is about one of those types of secrets. A secret that Paul has learnt along the way that has significantly shaped uh, his life. The Apostle Paul, who wrote this letter that we're going to dig into in just a moment. And before we read it, the reality is that he's, he's speaking about something that is just as relevant today as it was uh, when, he, when he penned the words. Uh, like I say, this pandemic that is actually uh, a much bigger problem for us than, than COVID-19. And it starts all the way back in Genesis 3. So in the Garden of Eden, you know, the serpent, the slippery serpent comes along and, uh, and he challenges uh, Eve about what God has said to her in the garden. Verse 4, when talking about the, the fruit from the tree of knowledge, the serpent says, You will not certainly die, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And there it is, this seed of discontentment that has been sown. You know, up until that point, Adam and Eve were quite happy with what God had instructed them. They could have anything from the garden except they couldn't eat the fruit from that particular tree. But the serpent comes along to sow that seed. Ah, uh, did God really say that? You know what? You, you, really, you really should have some of the fruit from that, from that tree. It'll be okay for you to have it. Does that feel familiar at all? That sense of, of missing out, that sense of something that's, should be yours or could be 
yours. Discontentment, it's this, it's this global pandemic of epic proportions, right? And especially for us here in the Western world, you know, where there's just this, this striving for that next thing uh, that we think will, will somehow satisfy. But Paul's secret that he talks about in these verses, if we can live with it, will actually change our lives. And I know that that sounds a bit dramatic, Stanley, but it really can reshape us. It will affect our own personal lives, but it'll also really help in our interactions with other people as well. Are you ready for the secret? It's found in Philippians 4. Philippians 4, the, the last chapter of the book of Philippians. Uh, uh, like I say, a letter that's written from the Apostle Paul to the church that gathers in Philippi. And uh, um, it's kind of like quite a free-flowing uh, letter. Richard Mellick um, uh, describes the letter as theology in street clothes. So it's an informal, uh, free-flowing applied theology type of letter. So rather than it being, um, you know, a more systematic, thought through, um, structural type of letter, it's more free flowing. It addresses, you know, specific issues. And in, and in these particular verses, he's thanking them for the really kind uh, gift of finances that they have given to him. Let's pick it up in verse 4. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am need, for I have learned to be content. Whatever the circumstances, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret. Here it is of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Verse 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Awesome words, eh? Uh, the message version just puts that last little bit like this. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. The secret of being content in every and any situation. Now that's actually life-changing, isn't it? To be content, no matter what the circumstances are around us. And, and apparently it was actually quite common for the philosophers of the time around Paul um, to talk about this idea of contentment. But when they talked about it, it was always orientated around the internal. So you can, you can cope with this situation because of what you have uh, on the inside of you, the fortitude that you have yourself. Whereas Paul flips this on its head and he actually makes the point it's because of the external. It's because of the who is helping him to be content in those circumstances. You know, in verse 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And actually, as a, as a little uh, aside to this, um, I'm reading there from the NIV version of the Bible, New International Version, and it's the 2011 edition, the latest edition of it. But interestingly enough, I've got a, a 1996 um, NIV version that I use a lot. And the wording is ever so slightly different because as they've gone through time, they've continued to tweak and adjust and just make sure that the text reflects as accurately as possible uh, what Paul was trying to communicate. And in the 1996 version, uh, it says this, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So, 996, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. And in the 2011 version, it's, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. All this, being content in every situation 
stuff. It's a, it's a subtle but important little shift, isn't it? This orientating towards being content. God can give you the strength to be able to be content in every situation. That we find ourselves being content because of the strength that we get from the one who gives us that strength. That's, that's the secret. N.T. Wright puts it this way, and this is the secret, as with everything else for Paul, the God he knew in Jesus the Messiah enabled him to face everything with a strength that came from outside. That's a promise for anyone and everyone who is to prepared to go to the same school and learn the same lesson. You know, often contentment in our lives is quite a, quite a sort of subtle and nuanced thing. Uh, maybe you do, but, but I don't particularly often ask myself that reflective question, how content am I today? <laughs> and maybe that's a, a good question uh, for me to start asking more often. But sometimes contentment kind of hits us a bit more square between the eyes, doesn't it? Um, I was chatting to, to Rob Lynn at their um, home gathering just last weekend. He'd been away on a hunting trip. The people that he'd been staying with lived in you know, a, a really simple setting, a, a small uh, home, no internet, um, no phone, or very limited phone reception, just very, very basic. And yet they were so content, and he reflected back on just how content they were. It's not about the things, is it? George Herbert, a 17th century priest and poet, he said, A wise man cares not for what he cannot have. A wise man cares not for what he cannot have. So for you, how, how is your contentment level? Do you find yourselves content with where life is at at the moment? Or do you find yourself often in that sort of striving towards the, net, the next thing, the, the metaphorical looking over your neighbor's fence and thinking, ah, if only, if only I could have that, then I'd be a bit happier. I, I really need that thing. Or if only I lived somewhere different or... Now, whatever the statement may be, you recognize there's a level of discontentment within your life. Now, with a lot of things within, within our Christian faith, there are some balances to this, right? You know, there is, a, there is a tension here because we want to live lives that are content, like we're talking about, makes a massive difference to our lives, to the people around us. But also, we want to be growing in our faith, in that journey of faith. So, yes, contentment, it's almost like contentment to the external things around us, but growing with the internal things around us. And even that's not really quite capturing the tension, is it? You know, the, an obvious example is if you live in a smaller house than your friend, be content with the house that you live in. If you struggle with uh, an addiction, then do the work that's needed to allow God to help you to grow out of that harmful addiction. This tension between being content and, and growing. So, so how, do we, how do we do this? How, how do we... How do we live in a way where we are actually content, where the contentment levels within our lives are lifted? And this actually would be a great thing for you to chat with uh, if you are at a home gathering or maybe with your family that you're with or at least to reflect on personally. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the ball rolling with three just quick fire uh, ideas, uh, quick fire contentment contributors. 
things that contribute towards our contentment. And then you can carry on the discussion and the reflection after that. All right, you ready? Firstly, thankfulness. Thankfulness. It's a bit of a question of focus, isn't it? You know, do we focus on what we don't have or do we look at what we do have and be thankful for those things? That's the first one, quick fire. Second one, embrace your humanity. I keep thinking of the saying in uh, the castle, ah, the serenity, it's not, it's not quite that. But embrace your humanity. Simply realize that you are not superhuman and you cannot do or have everything. I know, right? And actually, I've got to be honest, this has probably been one of the most freeing things for me in the last few years. You know, just just coming to grips with my own humanity, not having to do or be everything. And of course, number three, so thankfulness, embrace your humanity. And thirdly, actively turn towards God. Actively turn towards God. Practice the discipline of looking to God in those situations and circumstances where you feel the discontentment sort of begin to rise uh, within your life. You know, where you feel that, that, that battle with pride uh, come. Learn to bring God into that, to, to talk to yourself and talk to God. You know, God, I thank you that I don't have to have everything. I don't have anything that I need to prove. Thank you that I don't need to defend myself. Thank you that I can trust you and that you will supply every need that I have. Actively bring God in. Turn towards him. Like Paul is encouraging us here within these verses, I've learned to be content no matter what the circumstances are around me, whether I have little or have much. I can do all of this through the one who gives me strength. Like I say, I'd encourage you to continue to chat about different things that can contribute towards your own contentment, to reflect on it for yourself. I know that this is just scratching the surface and just getting us started uh, talking about it. But before we jump into those discussions and that reflection, let me pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of contentment to us. And as we get ourselves back on track, Lord God, we want to be people that don't look to what other people have and be driven by that consumeristic sort of mindset but rather look to you as our, as our provider, as our supplier of all things good, and to live content with the things that you've put within our hands. Lord, we thank you for the difference that that makes for ourselves personally, but also for those around us, for the community around us. The attractiveness, the incredible attractiveness that a group of people who are content is. So Holy Spirit, we say, come, lead us, direct us, help us to live in the way that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. We'll see you again sometime soon.